are set to boom this one away. And off we go from Jacksonville. And this taken in at the goal line. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Well, the Jaguars ready to go on offense for the first time, and they're led by the former number one pick in the draft in his third season now, Charles, Trevor Lawrence. The word is potential, potential, potential. Think about this guy from the time he was in high school, one of the top prospects going to college, coming out of college, mentioned as a generational-type quarterback. He looks the part. Tall, big arm, surveys the field, and can take off and run when under duress. Off the play fake, here's Lawrence. Open man downfield is Ridley. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. Play action here on the first play from scrimmage. They want to see how the linebackers are going to react. Are they looking to stop the run? Or are they going to sit back in coverage? A really nice job there of going in attack mode early, and they pick up a quick first down. Across midfield he goes into Raven territory. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. From the 46, here's the second down and four. Lawrence. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. My first thought is surprise, because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? Looking to throw, Lawrence. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Touchdown, Jaguars! Six yards, and the Jaguars get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. And they said that they wanted to get him involved early, and what a way to cap their opening drive, Charles. We know he's one of the fastest receivers in the NFL, and he showcased it on that play. And when you have a guy like that, you want to make sure the defense sees him early, right? You want to see how they're going to adjust, how they're going to try and guard him because they can't replicate his speed in practice unless they've got one of the few guys who are as fast as he is. And all it took was one drive, he burned them, and I don't think it's the last time they call his number in this one. Touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And Hill will opt for the touchback. The Ravens offense set to go to work, and it's Lamar Jackson now in his sixth NFL campaign who will lead the way. And I'll bet he's talking to his guys about resisting the temptation to try and turn this into an up-and-down game, almost like basketball, where both teams press, and one team gets an advantage, our team's trying to run with them, and they're just not equipped for it. Doesn't matter whether you're equipped or not, just settle in, get calm before you go for the big strikes. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. In motion left here, one of their tight ends. The drive starts with a carry by Edwards. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Here's Edwards again on second down. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Now, hang on here a second. Looks like a Jaguar in some obvious discomfort from that last play. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. 
They run once more with Edwards. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Second and nine. Jackson options out left. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. Four yards there on the keeper, but still going to bring up a third down. Typically on the read option play, when we talk about responsibilities, we're talking about what the quarterback has to go through. How about the inside linebacker, though? His job on this play, shadow the quarterback and hold him to a short game. Did it to perfection. Now it's Jackson. He finds the rookie, Zay Flowers. And he will have a Ravens first down. He needed five. He got it barely as it will officially go down as a gain of five yards. Well, they kept it simple there, CD, only needing the short gain to move the chain. So they didn't want to go with a deep throw. They just go with that safer, shorter throw and able to convert. Nothing wrong with that at all, partner. Check the box, right? Make sure you pick up the first down. Offense is getting established. You're moving the ball. You're not turning it over. Check, check, check. They like what they're doing early in the game. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and it'll be second down. I have to imagine many a defensive coordinators had a sleepless night trying to game plan ways to slow down Lamar Jackson. What do you think is the most effective way to try to do it? Well, you've got to be a little counterintuitive because normally you're sitting on the wide receiver one, aren't you? But with Lamar Jackson, I'd sit on the tight end. He loves to throw into the middle of the field, loves that position as his number one target. Take that away and hope you have a corner who can stand up man-to-man -man against a speed guy on the perimeter. So that was all you're looking for on a play like that. Get the first down and keep the drive moving. Yeah, it just looked to me like he just said to himself, I've got this. I'll take it. I'll pick it up and let's keep moving. Get the first down, get a new set, and let's start over. Jackson throwing complete there to Flowers. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. That was a nicely run slam route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Oh, he had a man running free, but he overshot him, and it's incomplete. Looked like they were set up defensively in a zone coverage, but somehow they found a seam because that receiver all alone by right, that should have been a touchdown, but somehow this ball's overthrown. Very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. I bet they thought they'd pick that one up because it was a third and two call, and they got awfully close. Now we're at fourth and inches. I wonder if they think they're feeling lucky here <laughs> and maybe want to go pick it up. Well, they'll say no to the 46-yard field goal try. They're going to go for it. Here's Jackson. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Ravens first down by a good couple of yards as they get three there on fourth and inches. Charles, their first drive of the game, and already they're taking chances here, but they get the fourth down conversion. I I'm curious, do you think that that's something they game plan for on the opening drive if it came up, or is that something that happened organically? I think that they game plan for it, Brandon. And when you think about it, Let's just say it. The word analytics is a big part of how everyone looks at a game nowadays, but it's not just the analytics. It's a coach willing to be daring, willing to be bold, and they certainly were there. After one, 7 nothing on EA Sports. Raven football here as we begin quarter number two. Two yards to go, second down. As they've got it as we resume action. On second down, here's Jackson. Sheds off the tackle. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. 
Lamar Jackson, such a threat with those legs, able to improvise and get the first. Facing second and short, that gives you a chance to go for a bigger play through the air. But I think he said to himself, why don't I just handle this one? Got all the yards you needed and then some, and made that snap a huge success. Throwing is Jackson. Got a man, it's caught for a Ravens touchdown. Isaiah Likely, a five-yard touchdown. And the Ravens are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Justin Tucker for the extra point. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. That one was an extended drive, 14 plays all told. And finishing that drive off was the touchdown grab by Isaiah Likely. Each team's had it, each team has scored. 7-7 here as the kick's away. Taken at the goal line. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. As this offense takes the field again, it's been a while since they've been out there. We just saw that long touchdown drive by the opposition. But remember, when this crew was out here last, Charles, they scored as well. And let's make sure we give both offensive staff some credit, and especially the offensive coordinators, because we spoke with both of them in the lead up to this game, and both were really confident in their game plans. They felt like they had scouted their opponents and focused on specific areas in practice this week to make sure that they were ready to go. And frankly, it looks like they both did an excellent job. Now we'll see if those game plans can keep this streak of touchdowns going here. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. On first and 10, it's ETN. Treads into the stiff arm. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. I absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. He's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. I always talk about slot receivers. They're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. From midfield now, Lawrence over the middle. That's caught by Ridley. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. But well, it certainly doesn't matter if it's been through the air like on this play or on the ground. I don't know what's going on with this defense. In a sense, they've been AWOL on this drive so far. Three plays, three first downs given up. They've got to find the answers, and they've got to find them quick. Lawrence. That's caught by his tight end, Evan Ingram. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. That's another gain of 15 on back-to-back -back plays. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against him a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there. And they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. A give to ETN running right. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. The second and seven with our score tied at seven, but they're planning to change that soon. Only question, will they get three or six out of it? Now Lawrence. 
Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. But there's an incompletion, partner, and the struggles through the air continue because so far their lack of passing production has led to a lack of points. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. Here's Lawrence to throw. That's caught. It's strange. The tight end. And a pretty nice tackle there, ranging up from his free safety spot as he'll stop him about a yard short. I thought maybe when he caught, he'd have a good chance of getting that first down, but that's a nice job of holding him up and preventing him from getting to the sticks. So Lawrence will exit, and on comes Brandon McManus for the Jaguar field goal. The kick by McManus is good. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando or Jonathan Coachman will have high and analysis of this first half of action. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Look and repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive, first down. That's a nice throw there, and he's obviously feeling pretty good because, remember, he had a touchdown pass on the last drive, and here he comes out throwing again, and they wind up getting good yardage and a first down right out of the gate. Meanwhile, Jackson's throw is on target to Likely. So that'll be no better than an incompletion, and that'll bring up second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Jackson. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. The escapability in evidence there is that one good for 15 and a first. I can't be sure how much of that was planned pre-snap but it certainly opens up some avenues for their offense. And if he can stay a threat to break off those kind of runs, it'll pull defenders away from coverage and open up some choice throwing lanes for him moving forward. Finds his man over the middle. It's likely. And they have a first down and well into field goal range also at the 16 now. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop him with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Here's Jackson to throw. No hesitation goes right back to Likely. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. Now Jackson. Oh, he rifles one and that's going to be intercepted. Picked up by Ferrisano and Lurican. And the Jags are going to get the football back at their own 17. Definitely not the ideal time to see that mistake, Parker, because this is still a one possession game. And that's at least a field goal that just vanished with that turnover. Now, pressure's on defensively to prevent that pick from turning into points for the other side. The Jaguars ready to go on offense for the final time in this first half. 
And they may just be content to take this three-point lead and head into the locker room. A little over 20 seconds remaining in the half as they'll line up here first and 10. Now Lawrence. That's complete to Parker Washington. And he's taken down. It's a gain of three from the 17 to the 20. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we send you a couple hours south of here to Orlando, that's where we check in with a coach and our an abbreviated halftime show as we get rolling to quarter three. And we welcome you back now alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon getting set for quarter number three here. Good, tight football game thus far. 10-7 to score as we resume action on EA Sports. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. Well, out of the locker rooms, here they come. Their first drive of the third quarter, and Charles, they're trailing in this ball game, but we got a tight one and set up to be a very entertaining second half. And as we know, partner, in the NFL, there's trailing and there's trailing, right? Sometimes you're discouraged by how much you're down, but in this case, this is a tight ball game, so there's a sense of optimism here. I think they went in at the half and looked at their play sheet and said, these are the plays we really like. What do you say we use them to start the second half and get us going? Maybe a little frustration starting to creep in. The offensive line hasn't done a great job of protecting him in this game. And there he was, hit again as he threw it. Yeah, another time on his backside. Probably starting to get a little frustrated. Got to keep his composure. Can't let the defense know that they're getting to him. Again on second and ten, it's Jackson. Over the middle, connecting with Kohler. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. They'll try and pick it up by running the action to the right. And he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. So following the holding call, what can they do here on third and long? Jackson from the shotgun. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. Partner, you know when we call a game, we talk about Lamar Jackson and his speed and his elusiveness and the ability to get him on the ground, how tough that is for a defense. But how about his development as a thrower, as a professional? Edwards now on first and ten. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Well, we saw a lot of negative plays that resulted in plenty of lost yardage in the first half. And that trend is continuing here. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Again, it's Edwards. And again, the run defense stout this time. He maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. No gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. 
A third down now. Those last two plays indicative of how things have gone for them. Just nowhere to go on the ground and struggling to put up points. Falling there, but this place is going to wind up incomplete. And so many times we look at the opening drive in the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it. And that's a strong performance there defensively to force the incompletion and, more importantly, force a quick punting situation. The Ravens send their punter out now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and ten at the 20. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. On second down, a run with ETN. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. He shows you right there. He can do more than just cover in the secondary from that free safety position. Yeah, the evolution of the position has really been significant, hasn't it? Because a lot of teams no longer have a free safety, strong safety designation. They just have safeties. So wherever the ball is, one can be close to the line of scrimmage, one can be deep, and vice versa. On that play, how about a tackle he just saw? Pretty nice. And he is going to have a Jags first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds it for the first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. A shotgun snap and again the ETN. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Uh, that's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. On uh, second down, ETN once more. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they are playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. The heavy set out there, three tight ends in the formation for third and three. Lawrence will throw, and this pass broken up. The contact well of time there, and now fourth down. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides, and there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. Here's Logan Cook now, as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. Ravens offense getting set and ready for this next drive. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. They'll run with Edwards here to begin the drive. And this defense able to plug him up there as they're getting yard to the 35. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. 
Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. And the Jags with five in the secondary now on third down. Now it's Jackson. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 23 yards, the final tally. So the scoring dried up here in the third. Nothing that quarter for either side. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Jacksonville. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here. And they run with Edwards off the option. And he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. From the 37, they work on second and six. Jackson going to keep it running right. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. Well, if you're going to run the read option, typically, you've got to keep an eye on the defensive end. And what does that mean? What are you looking for over the defensive end? Well, you want to play off of what he does. If he collapses inside towards the running back, then you pull it and take it yourself outside in. If he stays outside, you go ahead and leave it with the running back. In this case, pulled it and got good yardage himself. And he will be very close to a first down. You can see the close fist of the referee. And that means fourth down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. Tucker's kick is good. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. Well, you talk about clutch. That one was right down Broadway, and this game's all even here in the fourth. Yeah, he didn't leave any doubt, did he? Good snap, good hold, dead center. Almost like a big-time golfer in a major, firing at a pin from the fairway, <laughs> trying to win the tournament going down the stretch. Now this one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. Johnson won't return this, and the football will come out to the 25. The Jaguars again ready to take over on offense. And we essentially have a brand-new ball game. After that last field goal has tied us all up, we brace for what should be an exciting rest of this fourth quarter. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He'll look to ETN to start things out. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. We talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Broke a tackle, but not much room there ultimately. Just up past the 25 and no further. Calling the gain of three on the play. And third and eight now. They go play action with Lawrence. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Jaguars first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I like what I'm seeing from them here. Tie game in the fourth quarter. They understand the situation. They don't need to be in any rush. Go ahead and huddle up and run your offense. That last completion, 
put them in a nice position to take the lead in this game. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Lawrence. The throw left sideline there, but it's incomplete. Well, we all know possessions are crucial in a tie game, and let's face it, I really didn't need to tell you that. You already knew it. So when he sees he's got nothing good going, an excellent decision to just send that one to the sideline. Here's second and ten. Again, it's Lawrence. And his throw is incomplete. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Now Lawrence to throw. And it is caught. And he'll go down to half before getting this inside the 30. That one goes for 36 yards. Talk about the momentum shifter right there. Tie game, fourth quarter. These are plays that win you games. And now defensively, the question becomes, how do you respond? All three timeouts plus the two-minute warning. Here's first and ten. A handoff running left is ETN. He'll take it inside the 25. Getting down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They've got a second down now as they search for a score to break this time. And he stopped immediately there. Partner, you've got about 20 coaches on your payroll, but there's 60,000 of them in the stands. I don't think any of them like that play. And the later we go, it's starting to sound like 100,000 in here. What can they come up with here? It's third and seven. Another toe for ETN. And we'll get this into the end zone for Jaguar touchdown. Travis ETN, a 23 yard run. And the Jaguars have broken this deadlock and have taken the lead here in the fourth. We see this a lot on third and short yardage, especially down here in the red zone. They're going to sell out to stop the run, try and hold them to a field goal. But once the running back gets past the first wave, the resistance can evaporate after that. And he not only picks up the first, but he takes it all the way into the end zone. Now McManus to tack on the extra point. He's got it as they go up by a total of 17 to 10. So a nice drive put together there. They go 75 yards in nine plays. And it was capped off by a Travis Etienne touchdown run. touchdown here's McManus now to kick it away this take it in at the goal line and out a little across the 25 to the 27 Jackson and the Ravens here they come trailing 17 10 109 to play how will this thing pan out we'll watch as they come up on first down Jackson. Pass complete. It's likely. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. Now you're right on the edge. 
get to field goal range. You've still got time, but get up to the line of scrimmage and get set. All three timeouts still at their disposal. Here's first and ten now. Throwing. Jackson. That's caught. It's Flowers. And yes, he's into the end zone. So they get the late score they needed. And now the extra point can tie this thing up in the final minute. Tucker now to add the point after. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. So now after the clutch field goal, he's back out there to boot it away in what's now a tie ball game. Taken at the goal line. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. Out comes Calvin Ridley and the offense for their next drive. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Here's first and ten. Throwing now, Lawrence. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. They'll come up now on second down. Here's the rookie from Auburn, Tank Bigsby. And this is not going to be what they needed. They get a few here, but now third down as the clock runs. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. On third down, here's Etienne. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. Four quarters, not enough for all even, and to overtime we go. How much fun is this for everyone who's watching the game? How much fun is it for us to see this one get an extra period to get settled? So the Jaguars going to get possession of the football first here in this overtime session as the kick is away from the end zone. It's Dearness Johnson. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. And now out come the Jags. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 21. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Another nice job there defensively. They really stymied their passing attempts, and it continues in overtime. And for them to do that, that means they've had to be cohesive on defense. Pressure in the quarterback's face. 
good coverage of not just the, the wide receivers, but the tight end, the running backs when they try and slip out, and making sure they're at the point of attack. When the ball's in the air, they get there and help force some of those incompletions. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and ten. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. In need of a third and ten conversion to keep this opening drive of OT alive. Play action. It's Lawrence. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He'll wind up getting four yards there on his own, but it also brings up fourth down. Well, there were a couple of extra defensive backs in the game, so he really had nowhere to go with the football despite his search for an open receiver. So he has to take off and run for it, but he comes up well short of the line to gain. Here's Logan Cook now on for a very important punt here in overtime. Fielded just inside the 30. 44-yard punt, return of nine. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. Well, their defense did the job, got off the field without giving up any points. And now, Charles, all they need here is a field goal, and they get the victory. Yeah, and this is the way I love overtime. I'm one of those really, really old-school guys that like sudden death right from the beginning. But well, we've got it now because any points wins the game. On defense, get a safety, a pick six, fumble return. You can win it as well. So I'm really looking forward to this series and see how both sides play it. That's into the hands of Flowers over the middle. A very solid gain of 27. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 34. Now Jackson taps this forward, Jack Sweet. Oh, that is well read defensively. A great job of setting the edge, and that little touch pass is going to turn into a loss. Well, I think the hope is, you know, with a touch pass like that, then maybe you catch the defense off guard, but they were all over that one. And it is the kind of play that works better against certain defenses, and this clearly was the wrong one to run into. Really nice job getting him down behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. To throw is Jackson. Open man is Flowers. He's got it. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 22-yard line. Able to convert on third and 14. A terrific play call. They go back to that well. He's had a great game. Defensively, they haven't been able to stop him. Same thing here in overtime. And sometimes that goes to the play caller's ego because a lot of times you have so many different plays you want to call. But when you spot a matchup that's working for you or a player that has the hot hand, Keep giving it to him. That tells me you're mature as a play caller, and it's working for them in overtime. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. It sort of looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But if this defense gets two more stops, they can keep them out of that area. Now is second and ten. Play action. It's Jackson. Finds his man over the middle. It's likely. And he's going to have a gain of 11 to the 11 before he's brought down. First and 10. A lot of efficiency here on this drive. Heck, this may be their best drive of the game. Yeah, if they'd moved it like this throughout the entire game, we probably wouldn't be here in overtime. But right now, what you just said was the key word, efficiency. Taking care of the ball, move it downfield, get themselves in a position to score and win this game. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. It's a gain of seven. Brings up second and three at the Jaguars' four-yard line. Second down, ball on the three. First down marker at the one-yard line.
Jackson's going to keep it. And he is in for the score. And it is absolute stun silence here as they win it on the road in overtime. So it's a win here for the Ravens, and it was just too much Lamar Jackson. He really played well. Yeah.